Today, we are excited to bring you this webinar entitled Breaking Barriers, Women in Computing, Teaching, Research, and Administration. I'm Abigail Nadua, an instructor from the Institute of Computer Science, UPLB, and I will be serving as your host for this event. We're hoping that you will learn a lot and be inspired as our speakers talk about how they faced their challenges and accomplished many things as women in various aspects of computing, including re teaching, research, and administration. To start our program, let me call on our lovely director, Dr. Maria Art Antoinette Clarino, for the opening remarks. Hey, good afternoon. I hope I'm audible. All right. Okay, uh, can I get a thumbs up if I'm audible? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to our Women in Computing event. As you may know, we are currently celebrating Women's Month. And how else can we truly celebrate this but by showcasing talented and inspiring Filipinas in computing today? I am very thrilled to see all of you gathered here today uh, from fellow faculty members, professionals, and even students. I actually browsed through the participant list and um, I'm very uh, excited you know, with the number of people who showed up today who are also excited just as we are. These people who are gathered here are uh, going to celebrate and support women in the field of technology. As we come together to recognize the achievements and contributions of women in computing, let us also reflect on the journey of women in the field as they take on teaching, research, and administrative roles. Women have played the crucial role in shaping the world of computing. Of course, there was Ada Lovelace, no? the world's first computer programmer. And I'm sure you've heard of uh, the women who helped in uh, bringing man uh, to the moon. You know, these are just among the uh, exhilarating achievements and uh, contributions of women you know, in computing. And today, women continue to make significant strides in technology, breaking barriers and driving innovations in a male-dominated male industry. I encourage everyone to engage in uh, meaningful conversations possibly establish a network with fellow professionals, no? maybe for future collaborations. Even the students who are here today uh, may, may have an idea of uh, their possible uh, niche in the industry and support one another on this journey. Let us celebrate the achievements of women in computing, and I hope that the speakers today inspire the next generation of female computer scientists to aim for the stars and pursue their passions. Again, thank you for being a part of this incredible event. Let's make this afternoon a memorable and empowering experience for all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doc Maan, for the very wonderful and welcoming remarks. Now, let's proceed with our main event. Introducing our first speaker, she is currently a faculty member of the De La Salle University Integrated School, where she teaches programming and computer topics to junior high school students. She was a programming coach for international competitions, one of which was held in Singapore, where candidates ended with a podium finish. She was recently appointed as the assist assistant principal, but before shifting to the academe, she was a full-stock developer for a startup company, Salusciens, and had her internship as a web developer in the International Rice Research Institute. The University of the Philippines has been a big part of her academic journey as she earned her bachelor's degree in computer science where she graduated as cum laude from UP Los Baños and her degree in Master of Information Systems from UP Open University. Besides teaching and programming, she has a passion for business and music as she manages her small businesses, the Noob Baker and Mezzo Store, 
and released music in Spotify and performed in UPLB Fab Fair in 2019. Without further ado, let us all welcome Miss Mary Christine Di Clarino. Okay, so good afternoon. Um, I'll just be sharing my slides. I think I can see the hard reacts in the clap. Thank you already. Um, can I see a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly? Okay, thank you for the very responsive viewers. Um, just give me a few seconds to share my screen. Okay, um, for the participants, can I see again a uh, thumbs up if you can still see my shared screen? Okay. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you very much for joining the webinar. It is such an honor to provide this webinar from my alma mater, UPLB, and to be a speaker side by side by the Dr. Rachel Rojas. So I'll be talking more about my story, uh, my journey, and being a computer science student and being a full stack developer and finally being um, an, an educator or being part of the academy. So welcome to Breaking Barriers, the stories unfold. Um, and I would like to focus on three major phases. First is braving through computer science. So I'll be diving into stories, uh, which is very close to my heart, ICS, UPLV. Um, so how did I develop my character? Um, how I enhanced or how I developed these skills that helped me also to the next phase, which is de developing a developer. So what is it like graduating from UPLB, um, the nervousness of entering an industry, as mentioned also in the opening remarks by a male-dominated um, industry, and how I also drifted into academia. So I'll start off with braving through computer science, and I'll be focusing on these six major points. What were my goals? What are the failures that I encountered? What are the opportunities, distractions, the people, and lastly, um, the end goal, which is grit. Um, sometimes when it comes to speaking engagements, we tend to focus on the achievements, about the good parts, but for this, uh, for this speaking engagement, I also want to focus on the reality of things. Um, what are the struggles that I encountered and what are the failures that I also personally encountered and how it helped me. And hopefully you also get to pick things up all throughout the talk and all throughout the webinar. And um, especially for the students, um, um, I know that college is, a bit, is really a struggle or it, it can be difficult. Um, pero throughout the session, sana meron kayong marirelatean and you feel free to also react. So for breathing through computer science, um, can I see uh, a hard react if you knew already that you wanted to be a computer science student? And then thumbs up if you were shocked with how difficult computer science was. Yeah, okay. So there are a lot of hard and light reacts. So same sentiments, um, when I started my journey in the university, sa pagpili pa lang ng course, no? Um, sa pagpili pa lang ng course, initially, I wanted to take up a communication course. Um, and then, both of my siblings are actually graduates of computer science. Um, and they told me na itong communication course ito, it has minimal math. And they knew that I was into math. Um, the reason why I liked math was because there was minimal to to no memorization, diba? Parang even the formula you can um, you can just remember how how the formula was was formed, but um, hindi mo talaga kailangan i-memorize lahat. Pwedeng by based on sa problem, makaya mo na siyang isolve. And because of that, um, nagkaroon ako ng ng intuition then to to change to change my course from communication to computer science when I applied for, for UPCAD. Um, when I also entered the university, some of my batchmates thought that I had 
uh, pro skills already when it comes to computer science and when it comes to programming because they knew that some of them knew that both of my siblings were already graduates from computer science, one of which are already professors here. Uh, but in reality was at home, we we have our own set of interests then, and we talk about other things no, besides work and besides studies. So when that happened, um, initially it was also a struggle for me na um, nagkaroon talaga ako ng learning curve with my initial with my initial subjects. But I want to share to you first, yung pag-enter ko sa campus, what I did. So when I entered the university, I already had, or I already set my goal to, I already set my goal na I wanted to graduate on time. So, totoo yun, sometimes we need to manifest things, no? Um, Nagkatotoo siya, but as a first-year college student, and at that time, there was no senior high school. So I was just around, 15 or 16 at that time, um, sinat ko na kaagad na gusto ko talaga na makagraduate on time. And one of my main reasons, when you also set your goals, it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to have like a heavy reason behind it. Ako, I just wanted to be part of the workforce immediately. I wanted to help, not just help out my family, but I wanted to be part of the workforce. So um, I wanted to earn as soon as possible. So I wanted to graduate on time. And then I wanted to further challenge myself by setting the goal that I wanted to graduate with Latin honors. Um, I think um, I didn't share this to most people, but uh, sinat ko na kaagad siya no first year, first year, first semester pa lang. Sinat ko na siya na, uh, this is my goal. What are the requirements to have a Latin honors by the end of the, by the end of this? Um, so yun ang goal ko for each subject. So at the time it was. And I think up to, up to this date naman, 175. So yun ang isi-set ko kung goal. 175 or higher. Ganun ang isi-set kong goal sa kanya. Um, and I think as a student, it's very important to really set your goals at the start. Um, especially that you're in a diverse university. You, you can be distracted at maraming pwedeng mangyari. And not all the time. The reality of things is not all the time you'll be motivated. Um, even if how... Um, how how enthusiastic you can be in terms of learning and even if you like let's say the your classmates or you have a good set of friends or you like your course um the reality of things is every day you can be unmotivated but what you can control is the discipline that every day you get to show up to your class that every day you get to go back to your goal uh, why did I? Why am I in this university? Why did I pursue this degree? And why do I want to finish it? Um, and then the last one is, I wanted to give back. So that was one thing that I realized when I was a student. Even if I wanted to give back, um, let's say when it comes to my time or when it comes to my finances, um, I can't seem to do that because I'm still limited. So. When I entered uh, college, I wanted to finish as early as possible. I wanted to learn as much so that I can get um, a good job. And then that's a time that I can pay back. Um, totoo kasi yun eh, na you cannot give what you do not have. So right now, sometimes as students, and I really felt this when I was also in college na uh, I want to do so much, but and I feel that I'm still limited with a lot of things. I don't have enough time. I may have the energy to do things, but um, I don't have enough finances to, to do all of this. But right now, your mission is to be a student. So what the best that you can do is to go to class, make the most of your learning experience, and go back to your goals. And make sure that those goals it's not just the betterment of yourself, but it's also for the betterment of not just your family and eh? lang siya yung uh, personal um, thing, but it's also towards other people. And the moment that you are stable enough, you get to give more. Mas magma-magnify yung gusto nyong mangyari. So for goals, so those are for goals. So that's how I set my goals at the start of... Um, my college experience. And then that was already my practice for every semester. 
Um, nag-set na ako ng goals. Ano yung grade na gusto kong ma-achieve and a realistic grade. So, for example, if the topic is um, I'm not that comfortable with the topic or I feel na uh, this is very new to me, especially some GE courses, no? Um, so, I set a realistic goal. One, let's say, 175. Um, ch- feel ko challenging na yun on my part. Or if I want to further challenge myself, um, mas tataasan. I don't set a goal na uno sa lahat because I still want to be in touch with reality <laughs> na not all scores and i knew i parang i know my set of skills na hindi talaga lahat ng ng courses for me kaya ko siyang iuno so it's important to still set realistic but challenging goals so i would like to share now the dark side of things what are the first failures that i encountered in the university and as a computer science student um so actually one of the failures that i encountered was failing my first examination in um in UP. So, dahil nga meron akong goal na gusto kong mag-graduate on time, mag-graduate with Latin honors. Um during the first semester, relatively I I did I think well, but during the second semester when I had my ComSci 11 course, so that's base I think that's the basic programming course. Um the, dun pa ako bumagsak. Dun ako bumagsak sa first exam. Um, ngayon, some of you might react, ano ba yan? First exam pa lang, ano na? Feeling ko na ba? Failure na siya. Um, that's also one thing that you need to develop as a student. Um, and it's important for you to develop is to check indicators. So the fact that I failed this examination, um, pwedeng sabihin ng iba, okay lang yan, exam lang naman yan. But for me, I took it hard. I took it differently because I knew that it's an indication of something. And that indication is, I did not understand the topics. Given that I was a computer science student, talaga mag- map- mapapakwestion, mapapakwestion ka talaga na, um, did I make the right decision? Did I make the right decision oh, choosing this course? Did I make the right decision in prepare, ganun lang yung preparation ko for the examination? Um, should I already shift courses? And this story actually is something that I also tell to my students because I want them to realize that failures are really part of uh failures is really a part of, of life. It's really part of your journey and how you how you pick yourself up from all of these difficult um uh, situations and all of these hard situations in what gender you are in, and especially if you are a woman, um that's yung talaga yung mag, magbibigay ng strength and direction on your journey. So, on, in my case, um, I knew that it was an indication that I did not understand the topics. The question now is, what will I do next? So, every time that you encounter a difficult situation, what will you do next? Diba? You, can already, you can always feel those emotions, you can always rant, you can always vent out, but at the end of the day, what next course of action will you take? Um, in my case, that's one option. I thought of shifting. Um, but what I realized is I cannot be impulsive with these things. I cannot be, I cannot decide on these things with this type of emotions na feeling ko failure na ako kaagad just because of this examination. And when you make life-changing decisions, you should not be impulsive about it. Give it some time. Lay, lay that as an option, but give it some time. Because you'll never know things might change. And what I also realized here with my failure um, as a computer science student, um, I realized ko that the world will really not change for me. I cannot change my classmates. I cannot change the set, my set of classmates. I cannot change my groupmates. Although the reason why I failed is really because of me. But I cannot, I cannot change a lot of things. I cannot change also the teaching style of my professor. Um, and I cannot change um, the schedule. Pwede rin kasi naaanpok ako at that time. No? So it makes it justifiable. But at the end of the day, hindi, hindi magbabago tong mga bagay na to. But what I can change is how I approach the subject. So that's as a student, that's one thing that you need to remember. Especially if you are aiming for something. or if you're, Of course, I think most of us are aiming to graduate. Some of us are aiming to to graduate with Latin honors, you cannot change a lot of things. You cannot change 
that your schedule, you cannot change your professors, you cannot change their teaching style. But what you can change is how you approach the subject. Because at the end of the day, um, you have to protect your interest. You have to protect also um, your goals. So on my part, this is just the first examination. I looked at the syllabus and there are still other requirements. Um, even in the laboratory, I was just doing so-so lang. Parang, um, I wasn't failing, but I wasn't, it, it won't, um, I'm still not safe also. So I can still fail the subject. And I knew that. So what I did was, during the next lecture, during the next laboratory, I took down notes. I gave, after the lecture and laboratory, I gave, or I, I allotted time to study on these subjects. Kasi dito ako mas nahihirapan eh. For the other subjects that are um, relatively quicker for me to understand, um, I let it be. So I, I just schedule accordingly na. After ng lecture or probably before ng lecture, review ako ng notes. After ng lecture, check ulit ako ng notes. So you really just need to, to change a certain aspect or you just need to hustle or push a bit so that your outcome will also be different. Um, so when that happened, um, I, I, I guess it's a miracle also. Um, for the next examination, I only got two mistakes in the examination. And then for the laboratories, um, I think two I think two mistakes and then project I got the perfect. So I don't think it's because I was smart enough or I was intelligent enough, but rather it's a matter of based on your failures, how do you pick yourself up, and how do you see these failures as indicators? Because sometimes when you fail an exam and you just shake it off and you shrug it off, that at the end of semester and you already failed the course. And it's it's a harder process afterwards. Mahirap, mas mahirap siya i-process. Emotionally, financially, you also have to, to re-enroll. And there are, there are prerequisites also. That was also the pressure on my part. There were prerequisites for this subject. So if I failed this course, hindi ko na makakasabay yung bachelor's ko. So it's important to have those indicators. And because of these failures also, I saw the opportunities. Um, I saw the opportunities of being a, a female computer science student. Na nakita ko, um, nakita ko in every every class. There's always an opportunity to to. I wouldn't say maging bibo, but uh, there's always a learning opportunity for every class. And I hope that students still remember that. Because when I was a student, ganun yung perspective ko. Siguro kasi I came from a small school. So um, when I entered the university, and I was so excited that for each course, uh, I have a different set of subjects. I have a different set of classmates, rather. For each a subject, I have a different set of classmates. Um, I had different teachers. Um, and then I also liked that there was a laboratory, there was a lecture. So hopefully students also see that as a learning experience. Na mas nagiging diverse, not just your set of classmates, not just our mindset, but also the set of people that we encounter and even our professors. And what I also appreciated was these professors are, are also very knowledgeable of what they're talking about and the content. So every day talaga, as much as possible, I don't miss a class, not because of the attendance and Additional lang, additional na lang na I was aiming for something, but it was really the opportunity that I wanted to really learn um, on a daily basis. And I hope we all realize that for us to be able to study is already an opportunity, and especially being in this university is already a great opportunity. Um, your student number is sacred because. Hindi yan pinamimigay kung kani-kanino lang. Um, it is limited by number. There's um, there's a deliberation process for that. Um, and I think Upkat will be will be back. So and I, I think Upkat is already back. So yung yung ganon na kailangan natin realize that the space that we're occupying in this university is already a great opportunity. And with that said. 
with all of these opportunities, we should also be able to to check to check what are the possible distractions. Um, because we are exposed to a diverse mindset and to a diverse um, let's say set of organizations that we want to join in or um, set of even friend groups that we want to join in, we have to also check what are our distractions. And we will again go back to our goals. Among all of these opportunities, which of these opportunities align to my goals? And which of this will limit also my failure in achieving these goals? Yeah. Can I see a reacts, a heart or a thumbs up if you're you're still with me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll proceed to the next part, which are people. Ayan. So um just like what I've mentioned earlier, because of seeing these opportunities and um checking among these opportunities which are distractions, which are which are the which are things that will align to, to my goals and which will limit my failures. You also have to, to know how to manage people. Um, this is one thing that is very, very important um, that you develop as a student. Intelligence is not just IQ, but it's also your social, interpers social personal intelligence. It's also your EQ. There's different types of intelligence, and it's not just IQ. IQ is important, but that's not the only form of intelligence that you can develop. Uh, it possibly, that's your strength, but there are, again, different types of intelligence that you want to develop. When I was a student, having group works was one of the most cumbersome things that I've encountered. Can I see a reacts again, if you agree with me? Sino dito naka-encounter na ng mahirap Mahirap na groupmate, um, hindi nakikipag-usap. Uh, personally, first time kung ma-experience mag-ghost, hindi sa significant other or anything like that, sa groupmates ko unang na-experience mag-ghost. Ayan. Before, we used to, um, I think there are other messaging apps that we use right now, especially that we have Google Chat already. But before, kami gugusap lang kami sa Facebook groups. Um, I think Messenger at that time, May group chat na ba at that time? Nahalata edad ko. Uh, but I think mostly Facebook groups. So dun, dun kami nag chat ng group mates ko. If, um, ito na yung nag update ako sa repository, sa git. So ganun yung, yung mga na experience ko before. And there are times that seen ka lang. And at that time, hindi mo pa makikita kung na seen talaga. Kasi hindi pa updated ng Facebook at that time. So um, you won't receive any reply. Uh, and then at some point, Frustrating talaga siya. Frustrating siya. But what I realized, these hardships are really meant to happen. Um, because of these hardships, I also learned how to manage relatively difficult people. Because in reality, um, you will encounter still in the industry no, or in whatever workforce you'll, you'll dive into or if you'll um, go to other countries or, or pursue your work here in the Philippines. Um, you will encounter different types of people, different personalities, different backgrounds, and quite honestly, different traumas as well. So sometimes, how they react to things, um, what I realized that it's not just um, it's not just their personality, it can also be like a trauma response. Um, but at the end of the day, it will all boil down to establishing work ethics. Uh, just like what I said earlier, there are things that you can justify, no, na I failed this exam because of because um because of this person or because I don't like the teaching style of this professor or because because of this, because of that. But at the end of the day, when you have an end goal, um you you limit or you you try to control what you can control because your your view is towards that end goal. So for example, also you had difficult groupmates. But you want to do good in your presentation. So what do you do about it? Sometimes there, which happens, you overcompensate. Ikaw na yung gagawa ng other tasks. And what is the fair thing to do? To provide a peer evaluation tapat dun sa effort nila. 
um, tapat dun sa effort nila. Because at the end of the day, it's also an, um, at the end of the day, it's also a learning experience for them. It's also a learning experience for them because once you're part of the industry or even in the academy, magi establish pa rin dapat yung work ethics. Uh, we can reason things out. Now we're dealing with all of these, but we need to stay professional. And we need to to stay professional if you're feeling bad, at least communicate it. Or if you're not feeling well, rather, whether it's mentally or physically, you have to communicate it. Um, and at the end of the day, you we cannot just rely on other people to overcompensate all the time. Kasi kawawa rin naman yung mga nag overcompensate um, So that's one thing that I established when I was a student. And quite honestly, up to this now, those are still my principles. Na even if I am demotivated or I'm not motivated, um, I have to be disciplined enough to at least show up. My best can be different. It may, it might be, it might not be like the 100% best that I had yesterday. But I have to still show up and still provide a certain service. So you also as a student, when you are also figuring things out, let's say, hindi nyo talaga rin alam kung ano yung gagawin, you also need to communicate that to your groupmates. Um, because that's one thing that I also encountered. Not all the time, I knew what I was going to do. But I want, I, I just need to communicate it. Kasi baka rin, no, lahat naman din tayo, we're just figuring, thing, figuring things out. So at least, we get to figure things out together. And it becomes a collaborative work. Um, when I was a student, I disliked group work, but what I realize now, it's really something that we need to go through. And that is when you find your people. That is when you find your people. Um, I was fortunate enough, um, I was fortunate enough to encounter great women also in the, um, in the computer science field. Uh, but I would also like to acknowledge you know, my, some of my batchmates, uh, Sir O'Neill and Sir Ariel. Um, and it's quite nice that most of our batchmates, I see them flourish in the industry and also in the academy. And these people, we actually pursued our passion projects. So some, maybe you know, some, of your, some of your classmates or some of your um, friends or inner circle will be able to... Um, will be able to create a journey not just within the university university but even outside so i i get to work with great women Bikai, Bea, and Lesa, with these passion projects and because of this um, additional source of income we get we get to also help add other organizations like, such as for our farmers um especially during the pandemic uh we committed a portion of our profit to um different non-profit organizations to help out. And again, it all boils down to that goal Now you want to be established or you want to be stable enough um, for you to be able to give back. So everything, um, all of all of my, to, to sum it all up, my college experience, it really gave me a good experience that I was able to develop with it. And I hope most students will also be able to develop that because we can always uh, be vocal about certain things. We can always raise concerns. But at the end of the day, you also have to acknowledge that the world cannot change for us. And we have to develop this grit and sort of find our work around. So the next part of my talk is developing a developer. So I was able to... Um, be hired, fortunately, immediately after graduation. Um, um, immediately after my graduation. And I want to coin this term, beyond the limits. So it was my first um, work. It was my first work. And I was the only employee at the time. I was the only female employee at the time. And I was a full stack developer. Um, I was working with... Um, the CEO and the whole family, which are mostly male, but fortunately, they, um, they, their goals also align with, with my goals at the time. And it was also a great experience to be able to try out being a full-stack developer where it's really all on you. A few months after 
um, another female developer was also um, hired at the time, who, who was also my batchmate, KD. And we worked together to be able to develop systems, which are healthcare systems in Iligan. Um, the goal of the company was to make the uh, hospital systems there paperless. Um, so because of that, it was quite inspiring for me also to continue, although I, I stayed there for a year, but to, to finish most of the systems because I knew that it was for a greater cause. And when you also pursue or when you, when you um, apply for a company, you also have to check what are they doing? What are the products they, that what are the products or services that they are establishing uh, before you dive into them as well? Uh, because you also need to check, will you be motivated in doing all of this? Um, because again, it will go back to what is the end goal. Now, what made me now go to the next phase? Um, it was because of curiosity. Um, curiosity of how is it like to be in the academy? Um, how is it like being an educator? So I want to now dive into what are the roles that I that I went to, what are the struggles also that I encountered in the academy? So first is educator. Um, I taught basic programming and I realized that my failure in my ComSci 11 exam was really meant to be. Because of that learning curve, I feel that I was able to, to sort of break down or to simplify things now to junior high school students. So we're talking about um, 12, 13 year olds that I need to teach programming. So I teach them all of those things, data types, um, um, conditional statements, loops, and because because of that failure before, um, it helped me now as an educator to simplify things because I encountered it with a, with a high learning curve. Next was I became an advisor. So I became a high school advisor and it was really an experience for me. Um, it's not just the IQ that I was able to develop here, but more on the social, personal, and the EQ part. Um, of things and being an advisor also I realized what are what are the current concerns what are the current situations of this generation in Tante, and how to be gender neutral in uh, most of my statements how to be also be sensitive when it comes to um, stating facts like ment uh, mental terms also so that's one thing that I really um, experience or I really learned as being an advisor and the next one is club moderator so on this side of things um one thing that you need to also realize even if you are a computer science student or whatever field that you are pursuing um you're not just stuck in one area so me personally um i i like music i i pursue music so um when i shifted into academe um LaSalle also gave me the opportunity to become also a club moderator for the band where um, I get to watch these students perform, see how passionate they are. And that also inspires me to also pursue my music and to have the audacity also and have that courage to, to post um, music. Parang may times na I see them posting their songs on Spotify and performing in a very live audience. And that also inspired me now. Okay, maybe I can also do that. And true enough, that also happened. Um, here in the academy also, I had the opportunity to become committee heads for uh, different events. So there are things that you will be put into a difficult situation. But because of breathing through computer science, because of that phase, I feel that um, being a developer and being an educator now it becomes relatively manageable. I wouldn't say it would be easier, but it becomes manageable. Um, it's true that things won't be easier, but because you develop these skill sets, things become more manageable. So here is um, some of the posters um, that I also created for um, our event for the past few years. 
So I experienced a lot um, in the university being a registration committee head, um, being a committee head for a certain event, even being an MC. Um, so there are different roles that you get to try out also when you are part of the academy. And um, this is very close to my heart also because it's re still related to my, to my main course, which is programming. Um, just last year, uh, we had the opportunity to compete. And I was really excited for this one because it's the first time that I became a programming coach. And I wanted to also check if my knowledge in programming is still there and how do I communicate it. So that's also important, um, how you communicate your product, how you communicate um, your skills, and how do you market also yourself. Um, it's Again, it's not just about IQ and knowing all of these things, but also communicating that or transcending that to your audience. So for the programming coach, fortunately, um, we had uh, good results um, for the Hong Kong uh, International Computational Olympiad. Initially, this was also supposed to be in Singapore, but they shifted into online. Um, all of the participants uh, were able to get awards, so gold, silver, and bronze. And then for the MCE Summer Coding Hackathon 2023, um, this was held in Singapore, and this was relatively like younger. So both are from high school. For um, HKICO, the candidates were from grade 9 and grade 10 students. So age-wise, I think they're around 14 to 15 only, but they were able to, to get those awards. And then for this one is younger, grade seven. So I think grade seven is, if I'm not mistaken, around like 11 year olds. And they competed with um, candidates from other countries or from international, um, from, from an international audience. So they competed also from, so we competed against um, Singaporeans, Malaysians, um, Indians also. So different parts of the, of the world but they were able to get the first, second, and third place. So we were also the only Philippine delegate at that time. So it was such a great experience, not just for me, but also for the students. And it was also um, a great validation when it comes to our curriculum as well. So And also the training process that I was able to provide. And again, it will all boil down to what you have experienced in the university since I witnessed some hackathons already. That also helped me in training these students on how it is in the hackathon. So these are some of the roles that I have in the academe. And right now, I'm also the administrator, an administrator, and I get to lead um, in, a, in a higher position, or I, I wouldn't say in a higher position, but in a, I have a wider scope already, and I get to to communicate also with different units. It's also a, a new experience for me, uh, but I believe that, again, it will all boil down to, you want to, to continue having that learning experience. You want to continue having that learning experience and it's a matter of setting those goals and what is now your end goal. Um, so to end this webinar, I want you all to remember, continue exploring the unknowns. Right now, I'm in the phase of drifting to academe. I'll never know what my next phase is, how many phases will happen. And so with your um, career also and with your journey, um, we all have different journeys. And I hope that you were able to pick some things from my talk as well. And most importantly, I hope that you were able to relate in most of them. So for if ever you want to contact me, here, here are my email addresses. And thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much, ICS UPLP. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Mary, for your wonderful perspectives that really encourages us to explore different possible paths in the future. So let's all give a round of applause to Miss Mary. And <laughs> I'm sure some of you have questions to ask. So we are opening the table for a Q&A session for 10 minutes. Feel free to send your questions through the chat box or the Q&A section, or raise a hand if you want to ask your question.
Yeah, anyone po? All right, I think someone has raised their hand. Sige po, uh, Doc Maan. Uh, hi. Yeah, hi, Audible. Okay. Um, since I saw a lot of students who are attending, um, it might be at the back of their heads, no? Um, they might be curious. Um, how was the transition from industry to the academe? What was probably the base, the the most difficult, I suppose, adjustment that you had to face in um, transitioning from, you know, being a full stack developer to being an educator, being a um, uh, being part of the academy. Okay, thank you, Doc Maan, for that um, question, for that wonderful question. So. Um, one thing or one of the major things that I really had to go through um, and one of the most difficult part was to take the board exam. So since I was teaching not just in, um, I was teaching in the secondary education, I really needed to take the board exam. Um, so I had to prepare for that. Quite honestly, I didn't go to a review center. Um, I had to juggle it while I was teaching full time uh, in La Salle. Um, and fortunately, I was able to pass it in one day. That was one of the... Sobra na pressure ako dun because um, yung dalakong school is UP. So if ever I fail, and let's say, hindi siya 100%, it might, it might be me. So yun yung pinaka naging pressure ko at that time. Uh, but fortunately, uh, with, all, with also the help of my colleagues, they, they gave me reviewers and all those things because I didn't have the... Freedom to freedom in terms of time and money also, because it takes money also to to enroll in a review center. So ako na lang talaga siya, and that's one thing. Um, you I had to take the board exam, and then the other thing is, um, people management din talaga ang pagiging teacher. Um, it's not just teaching the content, but also communicating to students. And in my case, I also needed to communicate to administrators and parents. Um, and that's one of the major skill set that I am happy that I, I think that I've developed already in my seven years in La Salle. So um, I, I think that's the major adjustment. But when it comes to teaching the content, um, I'm just really happy when most of them get to pass, especially that this is in high school. So it means that they understand the topic. And we also have a process that we go through, like a formative assessment first before a summative assessment. So if a lot of students fail in the summative assessment, it means that I also failed in the formative assessment. Um, but when it comes to instruction, I think um, it developed through time, but the major struggle, I think, was to be able to pass the board exam. Taking it, again, I felt that I, I took UPCAT times times three. <laughs> times three because there are other topics that are not in line with my major. And um, to share also, wala namang programming talaga na major in L. So I took math. Uh, I took the math route. Um, or actually, it was PRC who dictated that I needed to take the math route. So I needed to go back also with all of my math 17, math 26, math 28. I think the course codes are different now because of K-12, but um, that's the summary of my struggles. But again, um, when you develop those um, skills when you are a student, it becomes manageable when you're an adult. So don't be afraid too much. For the students who are listening also, don't be afraid too much with, with work and with career. Ang pinakamalaga is you maximize your opportunity while you're studying. Thank you, Dr. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Miss Mary. So there are uh, questions posted in the Q&A section. So the questions are, how are you able to balance your responsibilities during your studies? And nagretake po ba kayo ng any komsay subject? Okay, nagretake, no. Um, I think I'm proud to say. <laughs> no, wala akong five. Wala akong cinco. I won't share my lowest grade. 
and what subject, but wala po akong cinco. And um, that's my tip, to have early indicators. So that also, no, in my when I also drifted career, I also had early indicators na while I was developing all of these systems, inisip, nagkaroon talaga ako ng curiosity na, um, until when will I do this? So that's the reason why I also shifted again to academia. And who knows, again, if I'll be curious with pursuing other fields. But ayun, have early indicators para you get to avoid repeating subjects, um, even how difficult the subject may be. Next is, how will you be able to balance your responsibilities and your studies? Siguro, I'll provide a practical um, example. No? I really take note of the deadlines. Um, usually, what I also appreciated in the university is all of the requirements and rough estimate of the deadlines are already provided at the start of the semester. Kung hindi man at the start of the semester, they provide at least two weeks for us to finish these tasks. So, pag dumating na yung task, nagsistart na ako. So, when I try to start it out already, pwede hindi ko siya matatapos kaagad. Para lang, I have ample time also to understand the project. Especially when it comes to projects. I think com ComSci students will relate to this. Na may tendency na magsasabay-sabay lahat ng project deadlines. Project deadlines nagsasabay, but we are already aware of these requirements. So, again, ang adjustment will be on our part. So, Ako, tinatay ko na siyang start out para pag meron akong, um, let's say, ay, hindi ko pa, parang hindi ko pa masyado siyang mag -get. Sige, tomorrow na try ko ulit. At least, I have ample time for that. And then, I always have a mini planner before. Um, ngayon, I think most uh, students like it digital. Pero it for me, it's still different when you write it down. And I schedule my time when I was a student per hour. So, let's say, meron akong class. The next hour, next week on time, what what can I do after that? Um, Magla-lunch ba ako? Or may gagawin akong task? Um, to share also, I started the online business. Although discontinued na siya, but I, al I also had an online business when I was in college. So I think that also pushed me to manage my time better because I wanted to earn already and I wanted to save. So for me to be able to cater to the clients and to the customers, I... It, it was a clothing business at the time. So, I had to really manage my time. Um, and again, meron pa rin akong end goal to graduate on time and to to have Latin honors. So, hindi ko pwede rin pabayaan yung academics ko just because I'm running this business. So, ayun, yun ang pinaka-note ko doon. Schedule. Like, you really need to schedule per hour. And you need to also surround yourself with good people. Um, I think yun... That's one thing that um is uh that was really a blessing for me. Um sometimes yung friendships na form ko is the ICS live. It was Tita Mayat pa. Tita Mayat was there pa before. Um I I developed friendships there in different batches also. Um kasi we were also aligned that we want to finish let's say a program, we want to finish a project. Yon, you push yourselves also to to become better and you need to be really surrounded with good people na again, align dun sa goals mo. Ayun po. Thank you. I think there are other questions. May time pa ba, yep. <laughs> uh, I think we we can extend until 2.05 po. So okay. we can answer uh, more questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll try to pick one question. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sige po, please. All right. So one question din po is that uh, it was mentioned that you were a graduate of MIS at UPOU. What made you decide to take master's study and how was your experience taking postgraduate studies? Okay. Th this is actually a good, uh, really good question. So um, what made me decide to take that course? First is um, in our university for us to also uh, we are encouraged to take up graduate studies that are aligned with our main course. So that was the reason why I took up MIS. And the reason why I also um, went to UPOU, I'll also share a failure, quote-unquote a failure. Um, I tried initially in TAF, but at the time, I was overloaded with my teaching and um, our schedule is 7.30 to 4.30 p.m. So we really had we had the time in and time out. Hindi kami teach and go. Um, and then after that, I had to travel to Manila and then go back to Laguna. So, kaya naman siya, but um, I knew na 
um, again, initial indicators. Until when ko kaya to kakayanin? Oo, parang until when ko kaya to kakayanin? So, after that, um, I, I, I didn't actually, I just attended a few classes there. And then, I, a year after, I enrolled in UPO. So, what made me also pursue my studies in UPOU is because, again, it's aligned to, to my lifestyle also. Since it's a, I have a 7.30 to 4.30 p.m. day job, even beyond pa, I get to overtime sometimes, um, na-realize ko na independent learning, although um, materials are also provided, but it was really more convenient as a part-time student. Um, and then my classmates also also had full-time jobs in comparison to to my classmates in CAF. So some of them, I full-time student. So the demands were really different. But in UBOU, um, what I appreciated there was um, na-realize ko na fit sa akin yung independent uh, learning and the online learning setup. And that also helped me when the pandemic came. Kasi online classes, parang ano siya eh, um, it was very new. Uh, it was very new, especially, I think, here in the Philippines. But um, when the pandemic happened, I had experience already with online classes. Kaya there was a time that I even shared my experience of online classes, kung paano nagsisynchronous yung professors ko, kung paano sila nagpo-post ng materials. Um, and that also inspired me now as an educator on, on how I attack online classes. Ayun po. All right, thank you po. I think we can answer one more question. Thank you po. All right, so the next question po is, what is your stand or opinion po about the industry being oversaturated and endangered by AI? Can it be a reason to switch to the academe? And do you think the industry will change in the future to open more opportunities? Okay, thanks. Thanks for this. So, actually, even if you shift to academe, um, even if you shift to academia, you get to encounter AI. So AI will always be there. Uh, at the end of the day, all of these tools are provided for a cause, but it's always the users who misuse it. Um, honestly, for example, ChatGPT. Um, currently, we integrate it in the curriculum where it's already part that students will use ChatGPT, but after that, there will be the next process na mas aligned dun sa competencies. Um, ng students. Uh, we have to sort of embrace it in a way that AI will always be there. It, it is saddening that at some point that it's being escalated too much already to the point na, for example, yung um, pag-create ng, ng voice AI to the point na ano na siya, uh, pwedeng falsification na siya, no? Nagiging false identity na siya. Um, but at the end of the day, in whatever industry you are in, it will always be a part of it. Um, students will sometimes uh, use AI. So uh, the challenge now is when it comes to the instruction. And it, as a student also, it's your discipline na pag sinabing uh, you need to construct your own email, or, or not really construct your own email, but you need to construct, for example, your own paper. Um, it's a skill also that you want to develop. I think you can rely on some tool. Diba? For example, as simple as constructing your own email, um, dapat, on the top of our heads, we can, we can construct our own emails. Um, we can sort of rely no, to, to chat GPT or all of this AI to check if the grammar is correct. But huwag natin kalimutan yung mga basic skills naman na, na kaya natin mag-construct ng sarili natin email and construct our own paper, construct, write all of these, all of these things. Um, usually, these AIs are for counter-checking only. So that's my perspective on these things. Um, again, unfortunately, it is misused a lot. Um, but for us in the academy or in high school, um, it is still part of the curriculum. And dahil now we notice that ChatGPT will always be there. Uh, we just teach them um, responsible usage of AI. Oh, Same thing. Okay. With Thank you so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, for Miss Mary. So there are actually a lot more questions that I'll were, just type the answer. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, for Miss Mary. And for those who still want to ask questions, uh, feel free to send your questions and hopefully we can answer them uh, at the end of the webinar. And if not, 
Uh, we will be sending the questions to our speakers. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much again, Miss Mary. So uh, let's introduce our next speaker. So our next speaker is a professor at the Institute of Computer Science in the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. She completed her bachelor's degree in computer science at the same university where she graduated as a cum laude. She also completed her PhD in computer science at the Australian National University and also received her PhD in education, major in educational leadership and management from De La Salle University. She served as the vice president for research and development and for academic affairs in Enyo Manila and as the dean of the College of Computer Studies at De La Salle University. She's also a member of the technical panel on IT education of CHED and the chair of the CHED Technical Committee on Computer Science. In the field of research, her primary field of interest is natural language processing. With her expertise in the said field, she had been the PH principal investigator of a project by the Philippine California Advanced Research Institute. She also served as the project co-lead for empowering local communities through e-participation and another project called Developing Natural Language Processing or Data Mining Application for e-Legislation, a project funded by the International Development Research Center. Due to her contributions, she had been included in the top 1,000 scientists in the Philippines by the AD Scientific Index 2024 and had been an ASEAN member state national finalist representing the Philippines in the senior scientist category of the ASEAN Women in Science 2022 awards. She has indeed accomplished a lot throughout her years of experience. I know that we all can't wait to hear more from the person herself. So let's all welcome Dr. Rachel Edita O. Rojas. Thank you, Abigail. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I would like to share my slides. Thank you for the Institute of Computer Science for the invite. And Mom Risa Mercado, thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. Nakaka-pressure naman kasi ang haba no. <laughs> Introduction sa akin at napakaganda ng chineer sa atin ni Miss Mary Christine. So, um, if you would like to know more about me, I have provided here uh, a QR code. Uh, to access my Google site. It is my online curriculum vitae. Ayan. So I'd also like to thank my daughter for the caricatures that she had, she had made when she was still a, a, a child, a small <laughs> daughter. Okay, so as a teacher and as a researcher myself, what is women in computing? Ano ba yung sinasabi ng, <laughs> ng mga kababaihan? Okay, so ako kasi hindi ako basta tumatanggap. Ano, I want to be convinced, okay, uh, based on literature. So what is said that they call gen the gender gaps in technology? So I would like to share with you what I have found in literature and share some of the things that I've learned <laughs> through the decades <laughs> of my life <laughs> and also through some of the people that I have encountered in my journey. Okay, so first is, so dalawa lang ano, <laughs> what does the literature say and what can I share uh, as um, a woman in this field of computing? So based in the 2024 Women in Tech Statistics, Gender Diversity in Tech, they posted a question. And also, this is a question that I will ask the group. No? Sa palagay niyo ba, is there an underrepresentation of females in tech? Pwede ba makita ang mga responses niyo? Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down? 
Okay, so this is the question that we'd like to answer and also through these papers that I have found answering gender diversity, okay? Gender gaps in technology. You, we can look at it in three phases, no? First would be the education. Now we are in UP Los Baños hosting this webinar. What, are, what does the data say? Is it really a, a male-dominated field? No? So yun ang tatanungin natin. Talaga ba? No? Based on the data, is it really a male-dominated field? Sabi nung ating uh, lovely uh, director of ICS. No? Maganda nung pakilala sa kanya. No? Male do so anong sabi ng data? Now, what does the data say about employment? And further, sabi, ano ba yung embudo? <laughs> Funnel, no? So, education and then a step further for employment and then in leadership capacity. Nakikita ba natin itong tinatawag na gender gaps in technology? Okay, so let us start. Education. Sa education ba? Nakikita ba natin, okay? This is a paper on Southeast Asia tech sector in the share of women in higher education. So dito, pinapakita na ang overall percentage of women across fields in higher education, ba mataas, ano, 56%. While in technology, 39 lang in Southeast Asia. If you compare that, U.S. mas mababa, no? 24 so, lumalaban ang, ang Southeast Asia. Okay? And this is the data from uh, Boosting Women in Southeast Asia Tech Sector. Now, in the Philippines, o sige, mawi tayo sa Pilipinas. Let's bring it home. This, uh, itong mga graph na to was derived from the data of the Commission on Higher Education segregated by gender. Of all IT, and ano yung isinasabing ITE program? Yun yung computer science, information systems, information technology, and others. No. So dito, makikita natin na ang males, upon admission, okay, is 52%. This is national data, ha? Although medyo luma ang ano, pero makikita natin ang trend na nagdo-dominate pa rin ang males, 52%, 48%. And then at the end of this uh, graph, 55%, so talagang nagdo-dominate pa rin. Uh, when I was the dean of the College of Commerce, talagang mabibilang mo during freshman orientation. Masaspot mo dun sa auditorium, sino ang babae. Okay, so, pero sa national data, no, parang neck to neck, ano, pero ano pa rin. And this is very interesting, ano? Kasi ito upon admission, sino ang eventually gumagraduate? Unfortunately, walang study na nag-dig deep, ano? Ina-explain na bakit ganito ang data, okay? Lumalabas na sa graduation, <laughs> sabi nga ni Miss Mary, no, the great <laughs> ano man ang obstacle, ano man ang mangyari sa kanya, right? Titignan niya per hour, ano ang ginagawa ko sa buhay ko per hour. <laughs> Parang tinamaan ako doon, Miss Mary, no? <laughs> Although ako kasi hindi ako crammer eh. Hindi ako crammer. So, uh, I, I usually do things ahead of time. Kaya pag malapit na, medyo nape-pressure na ako. So, this is very interesting data. Maganda na magdigdip. Dahil ibig sabihin, yung percentage ng women who grad graduate in ITE uh, programs, nag-neck to neck, 51% and 49%. This is national data from the Commission on Higher Education. Sa graduate studies naman, nabanggit kanina ni Ms. Mary, ano, Mas malaki ang difference in terms of percentage of the men and women. Pero makikita mo yung trend, no? Sa graduate, yung nakaka-graduate, <laughs> humahabol, mas mataas ngayon yung percentage 
compared to the admission, ibig sabihin maraming hindi nakakatapos na mail at marami sa mga kababaihan ang nakakatapos. Now, that's for the education part. Okay, after gong graduate, okay, ano ngayon ang sinasabi ng data about employment? Maniwala kayo o hindi ito ang aking natagpuan. <laughs> Kasi ako, as a researcher, no, hindi ako basta naniniwala. Kailangan <laughs> may data. Okay. Sa sa palagay nyo, okay, ano ang mga gender gap statistics in technology when it comes to employment? Okay, meron bang sasagot dyan? <laughs> okay, so in terms of employment, let's go to the data. 2024 ito. Maniwala kayo talaga? Totoo ba ito? 2024 data, it's only 33%. Of work, uh, tech-related workforce are women. Parang hindi ako maniwala. Pero ito ang data. Okay, 33%. How about Southeast Asia? Okay, share of women in the workforce. Ilang percentage? Sa overall, 38%. So talagang <coughs> makikita natin na konti talaga din ang women in the workforce. Okay, bakit yan? Okay? Alam natin ang mga dahilan. Uh, meron akong isang student, kinukwento ko ito pagka ano, uh, graduate school uh, student. Okay. Natapos niya ang coursework. Oh, very good. Eh, hindi naman yun ang problema eh. Ang, pro ang malaking problema is yung thesis. <coughs> Biglang nawala. Okay. Tapos, after some time, years yun, years, bumalik. Okay? Ano na yung Anong sagot? Ah, nag nakapag-asawa kasi mami. O, oh, sige, research na naman kami. Nawala na naman. <laughs> Hindi na naman nagpakita. <laughs> okay, anong nangyari? Bumalik na naman. Ah. Anong nangyari sa iyo? Ba't nawala ka na naman? Ma'am, kailangan matapos ko na ito. Eh, bakit ka nga nawala? Eh, nag-project, ma'am, eh, na nagkaanak ako. This is true, no? Kinakwento ko lang sa inyo ng paano. Pero talagang, these are the challenges of women in every sector, no? So, kaya makikita natin dito na 38% is the overall workforce that are occupied by women. And mas mababa pa sa tech, 32%. And consistent across countries. Eh, how about 2024 data? We are celebrating International Women's Month, right? It's close, 32%. Okay? In tech sector workforce in Southeast Asia. Eh, baka naman, ano, itong online na, may mga jobs tayo na online. Baka naman mag-increase. Naging increase naman. Alam nyo kung gano'ng ang increase? <laughs> okay? Ito, makikita nyo. Ay, ito, mas nakakadismal to. Mas nakakasakit ng puso ito. Meron akong kaibigan, gano'n siya. Gano. Masakit sa puso. Large technology companies. Akala nyo, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Google, Microsoft, they do better when it comes to gender uh, diversity in tech. Mas mababa sila. Proportion of women in tech, 22%, 23%, 25%. naman. <laughs> okay. At this rate of increase, that is almost less than 1% per year. Okay. Meron din akong isang graph dyan. Gano'n kaya katagal natin maaabot na magkaroon ng... <laughs> At least kung lumaban naman ng konti. Ano? Okay. Tapos medyo nag-ano ko. Okay. Sa ano kaya? Let's bring it home. Sa ICS kaya? <laughs> Sino dito ang member ng, ng God? Okay. <laughs> Anong hula ninyo? Sige nga sa chat. Ano nyo, ilang percent ang women 
sa ICS faculty. Hindi naman sikreto yan, wala namang data privacy dyan. Bakit? And naka-display sa, ano, <laughs> sa ground floor. Oh, ang ginawa ko, binilang ko lang. Oh, ilan? Ilan sa palagay nyo? Ilang percent? <laughs> Close siya dun sa global. Okay, 10. Uh, sorry, mali dito siya sa blue. 31 percent. 10 faculty members are women. In fact, hindi na updated to kasi July 5 yung aking picture. Kasi nag-resign si, <laughs> si Miss <D. laughs> So, mas mababa pa yung totoo, ano? And then we hired new faculty members. Pero nung July yan, 31%. Okay? The number of women, ito yung sinasabi ko, less than, mag increase naman, pero less than 1% every year. Kaya ito, itong graph na to, sabi ng Women Tech Network, it will take uh, East Asia 189 years para pumantay. Okay, may pag-asa naman. <laughs> okay, next, leadership. Now, as mentioned earlier, I have occupied uh, leadership positions. Uh, Nagbabolunteer din ako sa CHED as a resource person. And then may international, ano din ako, member ako ng... Um, Ang uh, anong tawag namin doon parang secretariat of the Pacific Asia Conference on Language, Information, and Computation. Come to think of it, parang ako lang din ang babae doon sa aming steering committee, tinatawag doon. Ako lang ang babae. <laughs> so sa leadership talagang makikita mo, panel nga, di ba, embudo, hanggang doon sa leadership talagang minority, okay, ang women. So, convinced na ba kayo? <laughs> okay, so, so ano naman leadership? 26.5% in the executive. Alam nyo ba sa naging vice president ako ng isang organization? Ako lang ang babae among the one out of four. Okay? And then, ikukwento ko sa inyo yung nangyari sa akin dun sa isang professional organization. Eh kasi nga, male domain, talagang galing tayo sa engineering, sa math, mostly galing sa male, male uh, domain. No? So, meron kang makikita doon na year, years, years, <laughs> years na lahat ng board members, nine, lalaki lahat. Okay? So, uh, to be continued yung kwento noon. So, in leadership, ganun din. Mas mababa pa nga 26.5%. Okay, now, how do you find yourself in such an environment that there are gender gaps from education, employment, leadership? What kind of environment prevails? <laughs> okay, masakit mang aminin. Okay, we will look at external and internal factors. Sa literature, tinatawag na external factors, itong tatlo dominate. These three are the persistent ones. Okay? One, retention gap. Meron din din tayong data dyan. 50% of women in tech leave their job before the age of 35. As mentioned earlier, marami kami. <laughs> Alam nyo, nung, nung bata ako, <laughs> nung bata-bata ako, okay, eh, masyadong emotional. No? Emotional. So, Kung anong mangyari, konting stimulus, may mangyaring gano'n, ano na, down na. Okay? Habang you, you experience things, no, sabi nga nila parang mas nagiging, kasi ano, parang nagiging balat sibuya sa Tagalog, gano'n. <coughs> balat sibuyas tayo. Okay? Pero habang tumatagal, you have to, uh, kumbaga, make your emotions work for you. So parang minsan, sabi nga, nagiging thick-skinned. Pero kung may nangyari, hindi ka nagre-react ka agad, hindi ka emotionally down. Kasi isang malaking factor yon And then we have so many variables. Okay? Pagka meron ng bata, okay, pataano na yun? <laughs> so mga challenges ng mga nana, yan, no? Ako, pag maaalala ko yung mga growing years ng mga anak ko, alam nyo, 
Ganito kasi yung kwento niyan eh. Uh, when I graduated from the Australian National University, I was a faculty member of uh, UP Los Baños. Hindi kami magkaanak. Oh, that's a very, very difficult situation of couples. Okay? So lahat na, <laughs> lahat na dinaanan namin except na lang in vitro yung ilalabas yung ano no, if a fertilize outside the womb. Kasi mag, magsaspend kami ng malaki doon, hindi naman siya mai-implant sa uh, ano ba, yung bahay bata. Okay. So on our 13th anniversary, 13th, naging apat kami. We had two children. One, yung aming panganay is adopted and he knows about it. And he's very happy. Mabait na, <laughs> mabait na bata at very happy. And then, the second one, magkasunod na magkasunod sila, is bi biological. So, kanya, madidevelop yung, di ba sa resilience, no? Kanya, makikita mo bakit mas maraming percent ang nagpumag-graduate kahit na mas konti ang women na nag-uumpisa. <laughs> you have to have the resilience, no? Kung ano man yung makita mo, sabi nga, whatever challenge you find in the, that you find on your way, gamitin mo yung tungtungan mo, tatangkad ka pa. Make it work for you, no? So ito, itong talaga, everyday problem ito, no? kung saan-saan kami kumukuha ng yaya, galing sa probinsya, galing sa agency. <laughs> Pag naiisip ko talagang matatawa ka o maaano ka na lang. Ano. So, marami kasi kaming mga concerns. No? So, retention gap. Nagiging problema talaga yan. Sa literature pinapakita, maniwala kayo may pay gaps. Meron. <laughs> 2024, hindi ito 10 years ago, ano? Ito eh, nung isang buwan lang. Well, March 1. <laughs> this month, lumabas. That there are gender pay gaps at this, uh, there are gender pay gaps. <laughs> now, being happening, okay? That women still earn 60. 15% less than men on the average. Okay, hindi ako nagsabi na yung <laughs> study, you know. Then, yung tech bro culture, hindi lang siya tech. Bro culture. Ano, ano yung bro culture? Yung pare. <laughs> Na-experience ko yan, ha? Vice president sa, with the president. Yung president, lalaki din. Ang tawag niya dun sa ibang ano, pare. Ano tawag niya sa akin, mare? <laughs> ano sa palagay niya yun? <laughs> Kasi may ganun tayo eh. Kasama rin sa culture natin yun eh. Pare. So kung masyado kong sensitive, hindi ka tatagal sa labanan. Alam mo, ang ginawa ko, I just focus on my job. I do my job well. Kaya yung nung duma, nung inalis nung umalis ako dun sa organization na yan, it's better off than when I first joined them. Sorry for buggy. <laughs> because I work hard. Ang tawag ko sa sarili ko babaeng hindi nakakita na. <laughs> Araw kasi na madilim na na sa org na ako. Madilim na pag uwi ko. Okay? Because I have to show no? Sabi ko nga, I am notorious for quality. Kaya, <laughs> okay. So, may mga external factors na tinatawag. Pero my, my, my dear audience, meron din tinatawag na internal factors. At itong mga internal factors na to are more difficult to surmount. More difficult to to suppress. Bakit? Kasi ito yung mga bosses na bumubulong sa isip mo, sa puso mo. Noong inalok ako na maging dean ng College of Computer Studies, 
alam niyo, hindi ko sinasabi, wala akong pinagkasabihan. Pero ang boses, kaya ko ba yan? Kaya ko ba yan? Okay. Ano yung internal factors based on literature? Pero totoo ito, <laughs> based on experience, may mga bumubulong sa isip mo. So, hindi lang ito sa women, and even men. Ano yun? Ano yun? These are what we call imposter syndrome. Ano yung imposter syndrome? Yan yung feeling of inadequacy, inability, self-doubt of intellect, skills, or accomplishments. Kasi, <laughs> pagka naniwala ka sa bulong, <laughs> Hindi ka pa nag-uumpisa sa laban, talo ka nun. Kahit ano pang sabihin, kahit ang sweldo mo pa, doblehin. <laughs> Lahat ng co-workers mo, sabi nga ni Ma'am Mary, di ba? Choose the uh, right. Eh, pa, paano kung nasa harap mo eh? Si pare, culture. <laughs> Tapos may mga bumub... So kahit na ano pang... Doblihin ng sweldo, napakagaling ng team mo, ang babait ng mga tao, lahat ng sa family mo, ayos lahat. Pero kung meron ka nito, internal factor, imposter syndrome, paano ka na? Hindi ka pa nag-umpisa. Kaya kailangan, sabi nga, hindi lang intellect, sabi, sabi nga ni Ma Mary, no? hindi lang intellect yung dapat natin nina-nurture. We should be grounded. In our spirit. In our soul. Para ma-overcome natin ito. Okay? This is very important, the internal factors. Okay? And make this the opportunities. Okay? May levels ng we can be involved. You should be aware. Attend ka ng mga seminar katulad nito. Okay? Pursue higher studies. Do action. Dapat may gawin tayo. Network and converse with role models. Nako, nasa kalahati po. Andiyan pa ba kayo? Mag-hello na kayo. Hello. <laughs> Andiyan pa kayo? <laughs> Nako, na, kalahati pa lang ito. Now, about myself. Nako, self-promotion naman to. Okay. My roots. Ito, address namin ay faculty village, college, Laguna. UPL bing UPL bing talaga ang dugo ko. Ako yung, ano kami, siyam kami magkakapatid. Pangwalo ako, yung cute na yan. <laughs> Ito, yan. <laughs> And my mother, okay, was a very loyal faculty member of the College of Human Ecology. And the street behind Pisay was named after her, Lucio Onyate. Well, was my mother. And talagang dugong UPLB ako. Dugong academic talaga ako. 1940s, kung pumunta kayo sa SU, yung history wall doon, naka-feature yung lolo ko. Ayan. That's my lolo. Dr. Leopoldo Bancain Lichanko. So yan ang roots ko. Tapos yun naman, yung biosci, pinangalan sa kanya. Okay, thank you nga pala sa UPLB. Ano. So, as mentioned earlier, uh, graduate ako dito, BS Computer Science. Napakahirap mag-aral sa abroad. Anong sinasabi nilang madali lang sa napakahirap, my dears? <laughs> Kahit graduate na ako ng UPLB, no, talagang napakahirap. No, PhD in computer science and as mentioned, nung ginawa akong dean, ano namang gagawin ko ng PhD ng computer science sa pagiging dean? Wala ko kaalam-alam. Tapos nagkaroon nga kami bigla ng dalawang anak. So, I took a doctorate in education. So, ganun ako. <laughs> Now, ito ngayon. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. I love my professional organization, the Computer Society of the Philippines. By the way, mag, mag ano din kami? Mag, magsa-celebrate kami ng 25 years. So, attend kayo ha. May 9, 10, and 11. Yung May 9, ang proposal namin, it will be the Women in Computing Celebration together with the AI Symposium. 
So, ang nag-govern nitong CSP is the board. So, kung titignan niya yung website namin, yung history, may mga taon, mga taon, maraming taon, yung sham na members of the board are all males. Just so happened, nung na-elect ako nung 2009, merong isa, mawawala, tapos magiging sham ulit, no? Aba, eh, naka-attend na ako ng symposium ng <laughs> Di, syempre, biruan among friends naman, among colleagues. Ano, sab- Baka dapat maging gender balance tayo. May mga ganun pa akong salita. Ano? Siguro mag-form tayo ng women in, ano, special interest group on women in computing. Sabi ba naman ng isa, maniwala kayo ha, Prof. Or dito ha. Ay, alam ko na pangalan nyo, witch. <laughs> so, kung makarinig ka ba ng ganun, anong gagawin mo? So, nangisip ko, hindi, wala na ako, wala akong nararamdaman. Hindi. Siyempre, masasaktan ka rin, ano. Pero, nangibabaw na sa akin, ano bang gagawin ko? Pa- ba't nangyayari ito? So, sabi ko, ah, siguro sa Amerika, may ganyan. So, ang ginawa ko, nag-email ako, Nung gusto ko na nang mag-form nitong Women in Computing, nag-email ako sa ACM. Diba yung ACM? Ito yung Prof. or Global Professional Organization for Computing, Association for Computing Machinery. They have a Women in Computing. Eh ano namang mawawala sa akin? Di in-email ko sila. Nagpakilala ako. Hinabi ko gusto ko mag-form ng Women in Computing, etc., etc., So, nag-fund sila. Noong una, $3,000, tapos $6,000, etc. Ito yung website. So, supporting and celebrating and advo- advocating for women in computing. Dapat may gawin tayo. Hindi lang nakukawawa naman ako kasi minority kami. Hindi. Okay? So, nag-support sila. So, ito yung unang ginawa namin, University of St. Louis, Tugigaraw. Alam nyo, gym lang yan. Oo, oh, nilagyan nila ng mga silya, tapos nilagyan mga mga, mga palamuti, di ba? Nandun kami sa harap. Yun ang una. First, second, sa Palawan. Third, El Cebu. Fourth, Cagayan de Oro, kung saan-saan kami nakarating. And also, yung sa St. Louis, binisita kami ni... Uh, ano nga ito? <laughs> nakilala yan, nagumawa ng mga processors. Si Dado, Dado Banataw, ayan o, oh. matend siya nung sa St. Louis, Tugigaraw, Pip, Sabiyo, every year yan, sinusupport tayo ng ACM, Women in Computing. So ito ba, alam nyo, hindi naman single-handed, hindi naman ako solo lang eh. Kasi may local organizer, halimbawa ito, University of Cordillera. Sila yung nag-organize niyan, sila yung naglagay ng mga, <laughs> nag-organize, nag-coordinate, nag-logistics, bla bla bla, naggawa ng stage. Wala akong kinalaman dyan. Ako lang yung, <laughs> ako lang yung taga, ano, taga-encourage. Tapos ako yung kumuha ng support, may finance kami. Eh, biro nyo, ano ba lang naman? Mamon, tapos may juice. Tapos sa gym, ginawa. Di halos wala ka nung gastos doon. Yung speaker lang, siguro, pamimiriyandahin namin. At saka may thank you card. <laughs> so, ito yun. Tapos nag-organize kami, Asia Pacific naman. Noong 2021. And then, converse with role models. Mahal na gayto, nabanggit din to ni Miss Mary. Itong si Filipina CEO Circle. This is an organization of Chief Executive Officers that are women. Ano pa? Ano pang masasabi mo tungkol sa kanila? Sila ay, they rose above the ranks. Hindi pag-aari ng pamilya nila o ano. Nag-umpisa sila as assistant, whatever, sa ilalim ng organization. Hanggang sa umakyat sila ng umakyat because of their good performance, naging CEO. So may organization na ganyan. Tapos gumagawa sila kung gusto nyo, i-invite natin to inspire women. Na, tinan mo, nangyari sa amin. So, 
ano siya, uh, role models. Oo. Iyan yung grupo nila ng mga chief executive officers that are Filipinos and they rose above the ranks. Ito kinuha ko, I, I, I will end with this quote from Miss Christina Concepcion. And I quote, it's, sabi niya, it's about fulfilling who you are as a person. If you want more, then go for it. Don't let convention or other people stop you. So let me end with that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doc Rachel, for your initiative in bridging the gaps against women in tech and for the very inspiring and informative discussion. Thank you. We are again opening the table for a Q&A session for 10 minutes. Feel free to send your questions through the chat box or the Q&A section or raise your hand to ask your question. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, actually, this is more of a commentary, no? a bit of background. Um, Doc Rachel and I go way back. Mama, okay lang ba? Share natin. Um, oh, yung sa natural language processing. There's a there's an offshoot of Computing Society of the Philippines um, dedicated conference, which is the nat uh, National Natural Language Processing Research Symposium. Mm -hmm. And so, ang una naming interaction ni Ma'am Rachel was uh, her group, no, uh, give NLP workshop, tama ma'am, dito sa UPLB. And that got me into the NLP field. And um, they actually had, I think it was NU that hosted the NNLPRS. Plus it was, I don't know if it was back in 2014. Na-curious ako dun sa field. And um, I even attended the NNLPRS. I was the only one from ICS at the time. So medyo... Uh, Miss Congeniality. <laughs> I made friends with uh, some of the faculty, and I, yon yung yung sinabi ni Mam Tanina yung with role models. No, I actually uh, took the time to really uh, get into Doc Rachel's mind. No, how it is to be in in that position and in that field because I got really curious and I remember I was Mam I was the moderator for an NLPRS, I think the following year, I gave Ma'am Rachel Rojas the, the, coin, the, the term, or the, the title, sorry, the mother of uh, NLP in the Philippines. Ma'am, I introduced you with that term. So, ayun. Um, for the rest of the participants, no, there's really no question here, but more of just to give you an idea of the uh, NLP contribution of Doc Rachel. Yung na-mention ni Ma'am kanina yung paklik. In fact, ma'am, yung sa mga Oko Costa, yun, um, I think yung inyong team, kasi na-involved din ako dun sa uh, Oriental, basta it's, it's an international uh, gathering mm -hmm. um, related to, Pitch. what do you call that? Uh, uh, purpose building, corpora building. No, ma'am? So yun, um, again, Sa Philippines, dalawa lang kami, isang male, isang female. So medyo kumi 50-50 tayo. 50-50 <laughs> kami doon. So yun. Uh, but yeah, then again, I, I'd, I'd like to encourage the, the audience, no? uh, please raise questions. I, I believe there are already questions here. So anyway, i just like to take the opportunity no, to share with the audience the history of... of um, uh, Dr. Rachel's uh, and the impact of Dr. Rachel on NLP and computing in general. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Can I respond, ma'am? Ma ma <laughs> so, may kwento kasi yan, but ako napapunta sa natural language processing. Kasi, ang ginawa ko sa Australia, yung dissertation ko, was about uh, programming languages. Dito may mga estudyante ako sa 124, ano? programming languages. Pag-uwi ko dito sa Pilipinas, walang makaintindi sa akin. So, anong gagawin ko dito? Of course, I still love uh, programming languages. Pero baka pwede akong mag-segue kasi because uh, dun sa mga nag-124 na dito, <laughs> di ba merong syntax, tapos may semantics yan. Of course, yung natural languages are exponentially difficult to capture. Pero ganun ang naging segue ko, no? 
So kung ano interested ka sa syntax, interested ka sa semantics, pwede mong puntahan is natural lang. Tapos natutuwa ka sa maraming data, oh, data. Oh. Uh, you can make sense of of uh, documents of uh, social media posts, di ba? Ah, uh, 'yun. <laughs> pwede ka sa natural language processing. So, actually si Mamaan, no. <laughs> Binyanyagan ako ng ma actually grandmother na siguro, hindi mother o oh. NLP. Actually, si Mamaan ako na toto. Sabi ko, ha, pwede nga pala mag-member ng na National Research Council of the Philippines. Actually, sa iyo ko nakuha 'yun. Mhm. -mm. So, hindi mo alam how it can be a channel of blessing to others as you mingle, nag-network ka. Di ba? Sabi ko, oh, pwede nga pala yun kasi minsan pag accreditation, naghahanap sila ng, are you a member of the a research organization? Of course, we have the professional organizations, pero hindi sila solely for research. No? Ang NRCP talaga, ang research organization. So, oy, mag-member na kayong lahat. Ganun plugging, ano? NRCP. And then yung Okokos da speech ha? speech uh, speech processing no so yun naman nag uh, country representative din ako doon sa Okokos da so actually yung online CV ko ang haba nga eh yung CV ko siguro mga ilang 30 pages na at <laughs> so hindi ko na mabanggit lahat minsan nga niisip ko sino nga ba yan hindi ko mayon sa maiisip na ah ako pala yun. <laughs> So, yun ang background kung bata ko napapunta sa NLP. Hmm. So, yung mga kailangan pa ng advisor dyan, pwede naman ako. <laughs> Alright. Thank you so much po, Dok Maan, for the uh, question. And I think marami ng questions sa Q&A. Medyo na naging impatient tayo <laughs> sa mga nagta-type pa ng question. So, I'm so sorry. Ayan po. Alright. So, first question po. Um, can you share more about the challenges being a mother while being in computer science and the academy? Alam mo, pag ang pagiging ina, ganun na ito. Uh, doon mo lang ma-appreciate. Parang katulad ng pagiging teacher. Pag naging teacher ka, doon mo lang ma-appreciate din yung mga teachers mo. Ganun pala kahirap yun, hindi pala biro-biro. Ano? Ganun din yung pagiging mother. Uh, ang mga anak ko kasi sobrang babait. Mababait sila. So, uh, yun ang pinaka-blessing. No? Pero talagang mahirap. Kasi habang maliliit sila, una, hindi ka makakatulog mabuti sa so, physical. Tapos, emotional. Kasi, Minsan, uh, hindi mo malama kung ano yung gusto nila. Tapos yung physical needs. Kailangan kumain sila sa oras, di ba? Et cetera. Spiritual, nandun na rin. So, uh, oh, mahirap talaga pag maliliit. Ano, kung mga nanay dito, pag maliliit talaga mahirap. Dahil pagka yung mga, natutuwa ako pagka yung mga boys ang anak. Kasi talaga, ang hirap ang boys. <laughs> mm -mm, ang hirap palagaan. Especially kung ano, ma-active, gano'n. So, tapos intellectual. Siyempre, kailangan eh, nurture mo sila. You provide an environment. Tapos yung pang, uh, yung minsan yung, ano yun, yung palalayain mo na ba unti-unti para natututo na rin sila sa mundo or I, ang tawag doon, ipoprotect mo pa rin kahit malalaki na ganun. So, maraming challenges. Hindi mo matututunan sa libro. Yan ang masasabi ko. <laughs> Kasi ako, nagre-research, nagbabasa. Pero yung pagiging nanay, hindi mo ma... Marami akong binasang libro, wala namang naituro eh. Matututo ka lang while you do the job. <laughs> So, maraming challenges <laughs> sa mga nanay dito, di ba? <laughs> Ayan. So, uh, another question po. Uh, sabi ni... Sabi ng someone, anonymous kasi. Ayan. So, I am amazed by your research productivity. What motivates you to be productive on research? And can you give some tips how to start? 
Thank you. Unang-una sa lahat. <laughs> Unang-una sa lahat. Required. <laughs> Required sa mga faculty. So, talagang, ex- ano, anong tawag na motivation yun? Uh, <laughs> external motivation. Kasi required kami. Okay. So, especially sa amin. Ako kasi ang rank ko, professor. So, isang taon lang ang binibigay. Dapat meron na akong ma-submit. So, unang-unang motivation is required. <laughs> And then, nakakatuwa kasi pag yung meron kang nadidiscover na, ah, ito, katulad may project kami ngayon, no, na ang, uh, actually pala dalawa yung ginagawa ko, ano, yung isa on natural language processing, yung isa naman, use of natural language applications to make sense of social media data on a specific hindi ko pa ma-reveal kasi hindi naman ako yung... <laughs> yung mag, sa balita, di ba, may mga nakikita kayo yung binobomba ng tubig. Secret lang. Secret. <laughs> so, yun yung gusto namin tingnan. Pero ano yung sinasabi ng mga tao? Ngayon, hindi naman pwedeng lahat yun babasahin namin. O, sino na dito ang nag-170? Topic modeling. Maglalagay ng... Mag-develop kami ng cluster so that we will know what the people are talking about. Or pwede rin yun, sentiment analysis. No? So, titingnan kung ano ba, nagagalit ba yung mga Pilipino? O parang wala kaming pakialam? Or ano ba, ano yung status ng nagagalit ba sila? Or uh, neutral lang? Or ganon. So, you can make sense of the data through natural language processing. So, natutuwa ako pag meron ako nakikita. Katulad nung, ayan, may question sila about AI. Okay. Ang ginawa namin ni Sir Reg, meron kaming paper on the uh, challenges, problems, or yung sa kabilang side naman, yung benefits, opportunities of large language models. Saan namin kinuha yung resulta? Ang ginawa namin, lahat na ng researches, lahat ng publication on, on the, the research database, ang ginamit namin, Scopus. Tinignan na namin na, uh, ano ba yung sinasabi nila? Ano ba yung karamihan na sinasabi nila? Alam nyo, hindi pa kayo buhay noon. <laughs> yung lumabas yung mga computer. Oh, sabi ng mga schools, bawal. Pagbawal yan sa loob ng classroom kasi madidistract ang mga bata. Oh, dumating naman yung period. Inaccept na yun. Oh, pinasok na. Di ba may computer laboratory nga kayo? <laughs> oh ngayon, may challenge na naman. Ano yan? Generative AI. Ano ngayon ang gagawin? Pagbawal lahat yan. Hindi pwede. Siyempre yung reaction of the unknown. May fear tayo. Fear of the unknown. Hindi natin alam. Kasi yung computer, mawawalan daw tayo ng trabaho. Nung no, nagkaroon ng mga computer, ganun, sag, yan yung computer, mawawalan lahat, ma- ng trabaho lahat ng tao. Hindi nyo maisip na walang computer noon, ano? <laughs> wag yan, wag yung AI na yan. Ano magagawa natin? Ano na yan? So, alamin natin saan ba yung mga problema, challenges, Of course, we see the benefits. Ano yung mga benefits? Ano yung, what will make our lives easier? Sa ano nga, sa Amerika nga, hindi na nagwawalis eh. Nakaset na yung oras, lalabas yung bilog eh, bilog. Parang plato, pero makapal siya. May oras, halimbawa, 4 o'clock, lalabas itong machine tapos ay ikot na nung bahay yun, maglilinis na. Pag-uwi nila, malinis na. <laughs> Hindi na nagwawalis. Tapos sasaksak na lang yung ano, may dishwasher. Hindi na nagsasampay kasi meron silang dryer. <laughs> so yung AI, kailangan ma-harness natin yung capability niya, magamit natin for our benefit. Tapos dapat, meron tayong ingat dun sa mga, ang lumalabas sa literature, pero unpublished pa eh, kasasubmit lang namin ni Sir Reg. 
ang lumabas, plagiarism. Ang sinasabi ng mga researchers na problema, plagiarism. Bakit? Kasi may original na may ari nung gine-generate ng chat GPT, for example, eh. Merong original na may ari nun, tapos gagamitin mo, sasabihin mo, iyo yun. Plagiarism. Bias. Yung mga naging studyante natin dito sa 170, talaga namang may bias yun. <laughs> oh, ano pa? Ano pa ba yung mga ano natin doon, resulta natin doon sa Reg? Plagiarism, bias, uh, and so forth. Marami doon sa research namin lumabas. Hintayin nyo na lang na ma-publish. <laughs> Wala pang resulta eh. So unang-una, <laughs> external motivation required eh. <laughs> Pero ganun kasi ako mag-isip, tinan nyo yung aking presentation. Talang, kailangan meron akong proof. And makikita yan sa research ng ibang tao. Anong sabi ng data? <laughs> so, <Okay>. only required. <laughs> All right. I think one last question po. Yes. So, sabi, greetings from a former member of JPCS. Nakita ko sa page nyo na active member po pala kayo ng PICAB or Philippine Computer Society. Okay. Sayang lang na wala po tayong local chapter dito. <laughs> oh, thank you. Ay, by the way, okay, nabanggit mo yan, salamat naman, ano. So, yung, yung Pilipinas kasi, okay, sumali tayo sa Soul Accord. Okay? Yung Soul Accord, that's an organization of organizations. So, parang may mother organization, yung Soul Accord. Meron silang regular signatories doon. Yung ABET and others, Hong Kong, Japan, ganun. Uh, members sila noon, regular signatory. So, ang Philippines, through the PICAB, PCS, uh, ano nga yung PICAB? Information and Comp Computation Technology. Ayun, another life ko naman yun. Another role. Uh, accrediting Board. So, yung PICAB, uh, ano pa lang tayo, Provisional Member of the Soul Accord, we undertake accreditation across the Philippines. Ngayon, yung um pag naging regular kasi associate ano ano tayo ngayon provisional provisional member makikita niyo yan sa uh, ibibigay ko dito yung ano yung website uh, pick up okay so pag naging regular signatory na ang pick up sa soul accord uh, Hindi na pwedeng pumasok yung ABET kasi parang territorial eh. Pag naging signat signatory tayo sa Soul Accord, hindi na pwedeng pumasok yung mga members ng Soul Accord. Ayan, i-share ko sa inyo dito. Parang wala ata sa website ko yan. Uh, so, pag hindi nyo ako nakikita sa ICS, <laughs> mga kung ano nung mga ano yan, pick up. And then member ako ng mga international organizations. And then sa CHED, this week, uh, last week pala, last week, naging busy kami sa CHED kasi yung pinaparevise na yung uh, uh, CHED Memorandum Order for the Offering of BS Computer Science. Nationwide yun. <laughs> Meron na tayong yung mga estudyante ko sa 1, 2, 3 alam nila yan, ACM curricular recommendations uh, meron tayong sinusunod no? hindi basta, ah, ano kayo yung paggising ni Dokma isama natin yung ganyang subject, hindi ganon kasi meron tayong sinusunod na global curricular recommendations so Mahabang istoryahan na naman din yun. <laughs> so, susunod na lang na webinar. <laughs> so, yan. Pwede nyo makita dyan yung pinagagagawa ng PICAB. Uh, naging, kasi merong Computing Accreditation Commission. Yun yung nag sa mga schools. So, member ako noon. Minsan chair. Minsan <laughs> ko na ng mga roles. Minsan committee chair. Yan. So, nag-aano din tayo, nagiging active din tayo sa 
accreditation. So thank you. Hello, <laughs> co-member. All right. I think that would be all for the Q&A session for Dr. Rachel. Again, thank you so much for uh, your time and for sharing some insights and your experiences to our audience for today. All right. So to show our gratitude, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation to our lovely speakers. So let me just read the contents. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Mary Christine D. Clarino, LPT, MIS, for sharing her invaluable knowledge as speaker in the webinar entitled Breaking Barriers, Women in Computing, Teaching, Research, and Administration, given this 25th day of March 2024 at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College, Los Baños, Laguna. Signed by the ICS Director, Dr. Maria Art Antoinette Di Clarino. Thank you so much. And also a certificate of appreciation awarded to Dr. Rachel Edita O. Rojas for sharing her invaluable knowledge as speaker in the webinar entitled Breaking Barriers, Women in Computing, Teaching, Research, and Administration, given this 25th day of March 2024 at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College, Los Baños, Laguna. Signed by ICS Director, Dr. Maria Art Antoinette Di Clarino. Okay, thank you so much. We have also prepared some gifts as a token of our gratitude. Uh, I think that will, uh, that will be uh, given to you uh, soon. <laughs> All right, so again, thank you so much, Doc Rachel and Miss Mary for taking the time to share your experiences today. We have now come to the end of the webinar. I hope you all have gained a lot of insights and that you have built more confidence and motivation to do what you aspire to do in the future. To properly close this event, I would like to call on the head of the ICS Gender and Development Committee, Assistant Professor Riza Mercado, for the closing remarks. Thank you, Ma'am Abby. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, to all our uh, currently 166 attendees no, uh, earlier this uh, um, 170 plus yata earlier the attendees natin. So to our students, to uh, the faculty, uh, guests from other units. I saw some from uh, CAF's Dean's Office, CPAF, obviously SA, um, IBS. And to those I failed to see their unit names in the list, we are truly grateful for your uh, presence. So as we draw near the end of our webinar, on behalf of the ICS Gender and Development Committee, we would like to thank each and every one of you for your um, active participation with your reacts, <laughs> insightful uh, questions, and your uh, contribution. So your mere presence uh, already contributes a lot to the achievement of uh, this webinar uh, uh, goals and uh, that hopefully you were inspired and um, motivated even more to continue your journey may it be in computing or your own uh, fields despite the challenges you encounter so this applies not only for um, our women attendees actually but all genders no, can relate somehow to the experiences shared to us right here of course, we would also like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to Ms. Mary Clarino and to Dr. Rachel Rojas for sharing their own journey in computing. Um, we have learned from them the various challenges, but at the same time, the remarkable achievements and the boundless uh, potential of women in, computer, uh, in the field of computing. And that uh, there are opportunities for all genders in computer science, but perhaps we always have to remember our goals, sabi nga ni Ms. Mary, to uh, go back to these goals every time, stay focused and put aside that feeling of uh, self-doubt or inadequacy naman, sabi ni Doc Rachel, and the fear of the unknown, no? So, ayan, we hope um, may mga takeaways din kayo uh, sa ating uh, webinar. So I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the ICS Gender and Development Committee 
and our ICS director, of course, ICS faculty and staff, and uh, of course, the uh, UPLB Digital Innovation Center um, for helping us organize this webinar. webinar. So thank you very much to everyone for making this possible. So today, uh, we were inspired, empowered, and we are reminded also that diversity and inclusivity play important roles in creating a more um, equitable future uh, for all. So let's all carry forward the inspiration and knowledge that we've gained today, wherever we go, into our classrooms, workplaces, and communities. So let's continue to support one another and break down barriers that hinder a progress. So as we, as we conclude, let's keep our commitment to creating environments where every individual, regardless of gender, can contribute meaningfully to the uh, ever-evolving field of computing. So thank you once again, and um, let's continue to empower, inspire, and uplift each other on this journey towards a brighter, more inclusive future for all. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Mom Riza. So before we go our own ways, we would like to request everyone to answer the evaluation form by scanning the QR code shown on the screen. Uh, next slide, please. So after answering the evaluation form, you can expect that you will receive your certificate of attendance within the week. Please make sure that you've entered your name correctly in the evaluation form since it will be reflected in your certificate. Finally, may I request everyone to turn on their cameras for a quick photo? But turn on po para picture. <laughs> Ayan. Everyone, paki show your best smiles. So one, two, three, smile. All right, one more picture. One, two, three, smile. All right. Thank you so much po, for the attendees and for our speakers for attending the webinar.